This is a supplementary video for the longer video on x86 front end complexity. This video shows a simulation of the original Pentium front end decoding. In this example, the CPU is operating in 16 bit mode to be consistent with the 8086 example. This simulation is not 100% accurate as it does not take into account certain details that would only add complexity and confusion. For example, there are limitations regarding decoding range of the prefetch buffer, but those are ignored as they would add extra dead cycles. Additionally, stalls caused by the backend are not accounted for here, and all branches are assumed not taken, since we are only concerned with decoding. Furthermore, pipeline parability is not considered, as it would hinder the parallel execution aspect of the simulation. Let's go over the decoding rules. This is a simplified rule set, which we can use in the simulation. Prefix bytes can only be decoded at a rate of 1 per cycle. This means that an instruction with 3 prefix bytes will take a minimum of 4 cycles. Additionally, either a prefix byte or instructions can be decoded each cycle, not a mixture of both. The one exception to this rule is the 0f escape prefix, which can be decoded in the v-decoder along with an instruction in the u-decoder, under certain conditions. For this to work, the u-instruction must use no prefixes, other than 0f, and must have a known length beforehand and be less than 8 bytes in length. Another rule is that the v-decoder requires the length of the u-instruction to be known. If the length is not known, and is longer than 1 byte, then the v-decoder cannot decode that cycle. This automatically means that u-instructions which contain length mods, such as the 66 and 67 prefix, cannot dual decode. Complex instructions which require microcode sequencing must decode singularly in the u-decoder. This will not be considered for this simulation though. And finally, instructions longer than 7 bytes will take up both U and V slots. In such a case, only one instruction can decode in that cycle. First, a quick overview of the simulation layout. Note that the layout differs slightly from the other simulations. A cycle counter can be seen in the upper left to keep track of the decoding progress. The color-coded legend is along the top, where each byte has been identified by its corresponding function within the given instruction. Note that the original Pentium treats the escape code 0F as a prefix, as opposed to part of the opcode. This is to maintain consistency with the other prefix bytes. The instruction byte stream is at the top and goes in left to right, top to bottom order, as shown by the arrows. The current decode program counter is shown by a magenta arrow in the byte stream. The decode window is below the instruction byte stream. This window is the output of the prefetch buffer as seen by the first aligner. It's a sliding window which begins at the location marked by the decode program counter. The aligner windows can be seen below the decode byte stream. These are the windows as seen by the two decoders. The first decoder is the stationary U decoder, in which the window is aligned. The second decoder is the V decoder, which imposes additional limitations based on parability that will not be considered. The V decoder will be stuck at the one byte offset for this simulation, since we will assume that the length cache is not primed. In other words, a cold byte stream. If the length cache was previously primed, then the V aligner could adapt to the length of the U decoder's instruction, increasing the number of decoded instructions per cycle. The current decoder state is shown below the decode window. The boxes are shaded in corresponding to the U and V decoders, respectively. This section shows the accumulated prefix bytes for the decoders, with the black arrows denoting accumulation. If the black arrow is coming from the left of the first two state boxes, then it indicates an accumulation from the previous cycle. It is unclear from the original Pentium documentation however, it is implied that only the U decoder is capable of accumulating prefixes. There is however one exception mentioned, which is the 0F escape prefix. It is also implied that the v-decoder is capable of detecting the 0f prefix and passing it on as an input to the v-decoder in the next cycle. This would be relatively simple to implement in hardware, since it can be done with a single comparison. As such, this simulation will assume this to be the case. There are four additional symbols which will be used to help show the decoding actions. A green check is used to indicate that an instruction was decoded in the given decoder. A blue circle with a cross is used to indicate prefix accumulation. This would update the decoder state, but not decode an instruction. An orange bow tie indicates that an instruction uses both decoders. And a red circle with diagonal cross will be used to indicate that the given decoding has been squashed. And finally, the instruction history stream is at the bottom. This shows which instructions have been decoded with a three-cycle history. Multiple instructions per cycle will be delineated by a colon. The cumulative instructions per cycle is also shown and will be updated each cycle. Now to begin the simulation.
With the simulation complete, we can see how this front end compares to others. Again, a reminder that the simulated IPC is based on the same byte stream across all processors for demonstration purposes, and may not reflect real-world workloads. Also, this IPC is the limit imposed by the front end, and does not take into account cache, branch, memory operations, microcode emulation, or back-end behavior. With that said, we can see that the original Pentium performs better than the 486. Although, the performance difference is likely not as drastic when accounting for pipeline parability, giving less justification to the marketing phrase, two 486s bolted together. In other words, dual 486s likely would have performed better. The Pentium MMX, however, made several improvements that justified the original claim. Anyway, if you found this interesting, please check out the other decoding simulation videos, as well as the more detailed video going over the front-end architectures. Thanks for watching.